I love to try new things when it comes to my DIYs and that is especially true when it comes to using my Cricut. I love to see what the new items are out there, new techniques and fun new things I can make with my machine. So today I am sharing a ton of fun and easy projects that you can use to get creative with your Cricut, Silhouette, Brother or any other cutter you may have. A huge thank you to Fetch for sponsoring today's video and a huge hello and welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies. I love having you here each week to DIY with me and if you're not already a craft buddy, no worries, you can easily join us. Just hit subscribe down below so you won't miss a future DIY or budget home decor video. I love finding new things I can make over with my Cricut and when I saw this black matte watering can at Walmart, I knew I had to get it. I ended up measuring it and figuring out that my decal needed to be about five inches by five inches, give or take a little bit. And so I headed over to my phone and I went to the upload library, select it and then click add to the canvas. Now you can use your fingers to pinch the screen to zoom in and out. And I am going to go down to this edit panel and select the sizing so that I can make it five and a half inches tall. That's it, easy peasy, click make it. I selected on matte and selected the vinyl option. And you can also hold down the item and drag it around the mat before you cut to get it where you want it. I'm just cutting this on some matte white permanent vinyl. I will have all my supplies linked down below. And if it comes out like this, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how you can fix that. Go through and remove the innards of all of the letters, so O's, P's, S's, and also inside of the planner basket as you see here. Then we're going to take some transfer tape right over the top and use a technique called reverse weeding. You can peel back both the outside of the vinyl, so all the excess, as well as the backer sheet, and then use your weeding tool to remove any of these little pieces, kind of like you would with iron-on vinyl, and it's going to make your life so much easier than trying to get that huge sheet off with all those little pieces. I also like to trim as I go so I'm not working with too large of a piece and this is going to go much quicker and your end result is going to be much better. Then I grab my watering can and my roll of transfer tape so that my little watering can didn't move around on me and then I like to press down in the center first and then work my way out to the outside to eliminate any bubbles and if you see any of these gaps around your words make sure you press that in that's going to help it adhere to your surface. Then after carefully peeling off the transfer tape, it is good to go. This is just gonna live in my house, so I am not concerned with any sort of ceiling. If you want this to be out on your porch, it would probably be fine without a sealant, but you could also do Mod Podge or a polycrylic. It might just make the matte black look a little different, so just keep that in mind. I absolutely love this saying and knew I had to put it on something. If speaking kindly to plants helps them grow, imagine what speaking kindly to humans can do. Another item I fell in love with recently was this canister from Hobby Lobby and I wanted to add a fun decal to the front area. When I saw this black chalkboard I knew it was screaming for a vinyl decal, I just wasn't sure yet, and I saw a variation of this sunflower saying of stand tall and face the sun and knew I had to do it. I started by measuring the innermost square just because I didn't want to worry about the little laurels and then I uploaded the image and sometimes my SVGs look weird in the preview so don't freak out it's just the software that I use it's the easiest that I can do but the uploads kind of look a little funky. I'm going to resize it to 4.5 because it's working just fine and I ended up changing my wording to white so I remembered which ones to cut. At the end of the day, if you change the color and design space, it's not going to impact the vinyl that you put in the machine, but it helps with the process. I'm also cutting this on heat transfer setting just because it is delicate and I don't want anything to kind of rip up on me. I'm following the prompts. I'm putting in all of my different colors that I get in a multi-pack. I will link my favorites down below. It's just a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different 12 by 12 sheets. Then that way you don't have to have a bunch of rolls if you just need a little bit. I'm also making sure to flip my mat over and peel it away from my vinyl just so it doesn't kind of roll it up. And then I'm going to weed all three of my pieces. Now I'm removing the center of that sunflower so I could just put the brown piece there. I didn't need to try to overlap it perfectly. Adding some transfer tape and then I'm also going to reverse weed the words just like we did on that watering can. And then we're just going to apply. So to the left of the center, I'm doing my sunflower. And then to the right, I kind of tilted it a little bit for the stand tall and face the sun. This is going to be awesome for storage. This would be beautiful for a kitchen. But I think with this saying, it's going to live in my craft room for some craft storage. 
It's a nice big container and Hobby Lobby had a few different sizes, so I'm really glad I picked this up. One of the big trends I've been seeing lately online are these acrylic toiletry bags that are personalized. So I decided to grab some from Amazon and try my hand at it. I got a three pack of pastel ones from Amazon and I also made sure to measure to know that my decals needed to be five inches wide. So let me show you a really quick and easy way on how to do this shadow monogram. So as you can see here, you're seeing snacks in white, but then you have the color behind. You could also just as easily duplicate this and swap the colors as well. So you could take the purple and have it be in the front. So what you're going to need is two versions of the exact same word in two different colors. That's it. So you can pick whatever font. This is DTC Peach Cakes. This is part of Design Space. I found this and I really like it, but I've got some other favorites on Defont, so I will link some down below. And say we want to have the purple up front. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we go to a range and bring it to the front so it sits right on the top of that white. Now I'm going to hold down my mouse and select both of them. You can see they're both green over here. And I am going to go to a line center. So they're perfectly on top of each other. We're going to click off and just select the white because that's the one underneath. And I'm going to use my left cursor key to push it eight times to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can start with eight and then I like to adjust. I like five. So then here is snacks like this or you have snacks like this. I'm gonna select all of these and make it five inches wide because then that is going to stretch across the bags like the ones that I had measured. So you can do is insert a shape to help you line up everything when you go to overlap them because this is gonna be kind of hard to get it how you intended. So all you're gonna do is take a box and we're gonna duplicate. You can either copy paste or you can duplicate up here. But I'm gonna do two per thing. So then I'm gonna select this square and this other square and we're going to align them center. We're going to do the same thing with these other ones because you want to make sure that they are in the exact same spot. We also want to make sure that they are over to the side because once we overlap these and layer them we don't want this to become an issue. I'm going to select one of these and one of these so I've got the snacks and the purple and I'm going to attach them. Then I'm going to take this pink, so what I'm, I'm going to select all of these and then basically using deductive reasoning, I'm going to get rid of this and then I'm going to attach those as well. So now I've got the two pieces and I can intermix them because when they line up, they're going to be in the right spot. Once that was done, it was time to get cutting. And so I picked out a variety of colors that I thought complemented the pastels. These are from the same multi-pack I used before. So it's all linked down below. I'm making sure to keep those little boxes because they're gonna help us put everything together. And then I am starting with whatever color is on top for snacks and travel, putting on some transfer tape. And then I'm gonna use this parchment paper hack to line everything up. What you can do is use it to reposition because it's not gonna stick to the transfer tape. But have you ever tried to layer vinyl? You flip it over and it just sticks and you are just like, I'm up a creek right now without a paddle. We don't want that. So the parchment paper helps get it in the right spot and then you can go ahead and actually stick it down. I just went across the front with some rubbing alcohol to clean my bag, applied my decal as usual, and put my hand inside the bag to make sure it adhered. I did the same thing for snacks as well as a fun little monogram, and I'm making sure to just trim off that little square after I get everything lined up because I don't need it anymore, and then that way I'm not sticking it on the bag. I love how these turned out so much and there are a wide variety of things you can use these for. I'm thinking like girls trips, bachelorette parties, you could do these as a cute little gift for your kids friends at school. You could do these for your mom friends. You could just do them for stuff in your pantry to keep them organized. And I really love this look of the one side shadow. The next time you're out shopping, be sure to save those receipts because I'm going to show you how you can get paid for buying things like craft supplies using Fetch. It's a free app I've been using for years to quickly scan receipts from anywhere and earn free rewards on literally any purchase I make, crafty or not. So how does it work? Well, from your regular grocery trips to a fun target run, your receipts equal points. 
To claim those points, you just open up the app, hit this button, snap a picture of your receipt, and boom, that's it. Fetch also has rotating partner brands that will earn you even more if they're on a receipt. And for my craft buddies who shop online, it's even easier to snap your e-receipts by connecting it to your email, Amazon, or Walmart account. It will scan and then credit you for qualifying purchases. Then your points will become gift cards. They have a ton of DIY and decor options like Joann's, Home Goods, Walmart, and even Visa gift cards to use at Dollar Tree. For a limited time, Fetch is offering my Whiskey Craft Buddies 5,000 points when you download the app and scan your first receipt. And that's a big deal because those points will get you over halfway to a $10 Home Goods gift card. You can scan this QR code with your phone's camera to download or click the link in the description and use my code WhiskeyandWit to claim those 5,000 points when you download Fetch and scan your first receipt. Up next, we're gonna do some wood burning and we're gonna do that using this product right here, which is torch paste. I've used it before and I fell in love with this after I tried it the first time at the huge recommendation of my friend Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. Huge kudos to her. She's always finding the coolest stuff and so I had to try this out. So let me show you how I made a really pretty sign with this torch paste and a heat gun. So the blank for this one is gonna be this basswood plank that I got at Menards a long time ago. They're fairly inexpensive and I like that it's unfinished wood. I'm going to measure and the width is about 13 inches so I'm going to give myself an inch gap so I'm going to say 12 inches wide. Same thing here 9 inches down to 8 inches so 12 by 8. And then we're going to resize it. So we want to make sure up here this lock button is locked. If it's unlocked it's going to warp all funky so if you can see here it's going to but if you have the lock on then you can go ahead and move it and it's not going to impact and like warp it. So remember when we measured, we want this to be 12 inches and that puts us about, meh, let's do 12.5. That's all you need to do. We're gonna go up and click make it. I'm gonna use a map. I'm also gonna select this and scooch it to the right just a little bit because I wanna give myself space around it as it is a stencil. So then I'm just gonna hit continue it's gonna to connect to my Cricut and then I'm gonna tell it what type of material it's cutting, which in my case will be vinyl right here. If it's super intricate, you can also do heat transfer non-Cricut. That's why I have it marked here. Just don't mirror it. So I'm gonna click vinyl, it's gonna prompt me and we're gonna load it into the machine. Then I'm just rolling out some permanent vinyl to use. You can use stencil vinyl. I just like regular vinyl better. I think it sticks down better and it hasn't hurt any of my wood. So that's just what I go with. I'm gonna pop it into the machine, have everything cut out, and then I'm going to weed this like a stencil. So what that means is instead of removing all the stuff on the outside like we did in the last couple projects, we're gonna remove the insides where you want the wood burning to happen. With the magic of editing, it is all done. And then we're going to cover this in some paper transfer tape that I got on Amazon. It will be linked down below. So many of you guys ask questions about where I get this. And the reason I'm using this for this project is because I am applying it to that unfinished wood and I don't want to rip it up or mess with it at all. Then we're gonna carefully remove the backer and apply this to the wood. Once it's all stuck down, we're gonna remove that transfer tape. And now it's time for the wood burning magic that is torch paste. So this is an orange gel that you're going to apply kind of like if you were screen printing. So I just like to take a little craft stick, get some out, and then I have a specific like Cricut squeegee weeding tool that I use just for this. And the nice thing is once this dries, it kind of like, you can just rub it off. It kind of flakes off. So then you can put it away and use it for next time. I'm just scraping it down and making sure that I am careful not to pull up any of the stencil, but it actually goes over pretty well. And I'm doing a thin coat. You don't want to cake it on at all. Now, this is only the second time I've done this, but even in the second time, I have gotten a lot more confidence. So the more I use it, I feel like the more I will love it because I already do. I let it dry for about 15 minutes and then I removed the outside of the stencil and then all the little pieces. Now here I'm trying to go parallel with my weeding tool to the wood instead of straight down at it like Captain Hook so you don't puncture the wood. Then we're going to go outside with this huge high temp heat gun. I got this one specifically for the torch paste because Courtney recommended it. And I also have my heat resistant gloves that I use for sublimation on and safety goggles just 
to make sure all my bases are covered. It gets a little fumey, so that's why I like to do it outside and also wear the eye protection. So I crank it up to high and I start moving it around while it's heating up and then all of a sudden it's just bam gonna start burning. So I like to go three seconds, move it, three seconds, move it. So I go one, two, three. You don't wanna camp out anywhere for too long or you're gonna get more burn than you want. So I kind of work my way around and then I added a little bit of extra burning to the corners where there wasn't any stencil just so it looked kind of even with the distressing and the wood burning. And I love this so much. The wood burning plus the like natural live edge of the wood is so pretty and I cannot wait to decorate with this this spring. Also, if you're one of the craft buddies that said you bought the torch paste but you haven't tried it yet, this is your sign to try it because it is so fun. Something similar to that that you can do is with these powder coated cups or tumblers, you can actually etch them with Cricut without having a laser. So I measured and cut out a stencil that said hashtag whiskey craft buddies because I don't have anything that says this on it and I wanted to put that on my cup, but you could do literally whatever you want. And I decided it needed to be six inches wide. I cut it out, I weeded it just like we did the torch paste stencil. And I'm gonna apply it to the backside of this jug just because the Ozark Trail logo is on the front. Now these bottles are from Walmart and the Ozark Trail ones I have found have the right powder coating solution, I guess, or how they do it, that this works. I've tried the Target ones, it doesn't work as well. So just FYI. We're gonna tape everything around it and then I'm grabbing this citrus strip. Now, before we used torch paste and a heat gun, here we are gonna use this furniture stripper and time. So I'm making sure to goop it on. You wanna make sure it's fully covered and we're gonna let this sit for an hour. I started before when I used to make these and I did a half an hour and I just think you need more time. So just set it to the side away from anybody that can touch it. And you also wanna make sure you are using gloves when you initially apply it. Here I'm just carefully scraping it after an hour and this is what you want. You want the areas to start lifting up, but it may not do it all the way. So I had to leave it for another hour so everything got all nice and scrapey. Then I used some hot water, removed my stencil and my tape while using gloves as you can see, and I started to scrape off some of the pieces. Once it was clean, I took my gloves off and used my nail as well as my weeding tool to get all the rest of the pieces off. And then I just used some dish soap and my hand as well as my little scrub daddy just to make sure all of it was super clean. I really like how it turned out. It's not gonna be 100% crisp clean like a laser, but for much cheaper, I love these. I made one of these for my brother with his business logo for Christmas and it was a hit. Now this next one isn't technically new, but I did want to share it because it is my by far best thing that sells on my Amazon storefront and that is screen printing. I bought a kit from Amazon a couple years ago and I have completely overhauled how I add anything to shirts. It's usually for the most part screen printing outside of any puff vinyl because I've been having fun with that too and it lasts so much longer. You're not going to get the peeling or cracking or anything like that. It's easier than you might think. So I was recently at Walmart looking in the guys section at their graphic tees and I saw these like crew neck with a pocket hoodies. And so I decided that I needed to craft with them. So I grabbed a black one and a pink one. They also had this really pretty color and the black one I will DIY with later in this video. So I decided I wanted to screen print the back of this. So I went and measured and I decided it needed to be about 12 by nine. This file I recently created for the mystery box challenge and I ended up putting it on a random challenge item. So I wanted to actually put it on a shirt. So I ended up sizing this file, which you can find over on my blog without whiskey and wit as a part of it. I'm going to mirror it and then I'm going to hold it down and move it to the center just so then that way I've got some extra pieces on the outside. I'm going to trim down my permanent vinyl. I'm doing the same vinyl that I used for the torch paste project and I'm gonna cut it out, flip my mat over, peel it back and weed the entire thing just like a stencil. The only thing different here is that it is backwards and you'll see why we need that in a second. Once we're all weeded, we're gonna add some paper transfer tape. Again, this to add it to the screen, you really need the low tack paper transfer tape. And then I'm gonna peel off the backer and add it to the screen. 
Now I've got a full in-depth video on screen printing, so I'm showing you the process here, but if you want more information at a slower pace, be sure to check that out in the description. I know so many of you checked that out and it's helped you learn how to screen print, do the screens, clean them, all the things. I'm grabbing my white fabric ink from Speedball. This is my favorite. I'm also gonna slide a Dollar Tree cutting board in between the two layers of my sweatshirt just to make sure nothing goes through. Now let's flip you around and you can see the process. I'm just adding some of that ink with a plastic spoon all around the outside just because I don't have much space to do a line like I normally would. I'm taking this little squeegee tool that also comes in that Amazon kit, spreading it out and voila. It is a super therapeutic thing to do. I love this and it is not going to crack or peel like HTV would on you. Let it dry overnight and then I come back through with my heat press. I have it set at 320 degrees for 40 seconds. I press the entire design and once it is heat set, it is permanent in there and I've washed my screen printed stuff so many times and it holds up super, super well. I've dried it, all the things. I decided to put it on the back because I really like that the front is plain, especially with jeans, but then turn around and you can see it. I also did it a little bit lower because as you can see, I've got long hair, but if you want to move it up a little bit more in between the shoulder blades, you can do that as well. One of my new favorite obsessions when it comes to my Cricut is puff heat transfer vinyl. Now the 3D puff vinyl is exactly what it says. It's going to puff up and look three-dimensional on your items. I bought one of these Lululemon belt bag dupes on Amazon. It's much cheaper than those. And I wanted to add kind of like a little logo looking W on there. All I did was cut it out just like heat transfer vinyl, pressed it, and it was so easy to do. I pressed it at 310 for 15 seconds. It just pushed up just enough. And I really like the monochrome one color look. I'm gonna use this belt bag on our trip coming up later this spring. Now a bigger project that you can do is a sweatshirt, t-shirt, whatever you're feeling. I decided to use the black sweatshirt that I found at Walmart and I wanted to do kind of a faux spirit jersey, kind of like you would see at Disney, but for crafting. So I measured the shoulders of my particular size. I got a medium in these and they are the guy's sweatshirt. So I went with a medium for a little bit more of a fitted look and I decided I needed all of these letters in crafter to be five inches tall. So I have this design that I will share with you over my blog, but I decided that each letter needed to be individual. So what I did is I duplicated it a few times and then I used the contour tool down here in the right to deselect every letter I didn't want. So they were separate files. You can do this with any like images that are just one color. You can duplicate them and create, you know, different files within design space. It's a nice tool to have. So I'm segmenting all of the different letters until I have all of these five inch letters as their own layer. Then you are going to cut it on a strong grip mat and it's literally shiny side down. Same thing you would do with regular iron on. And then we're gonna weed it literally the exact same. Nothing is different here. I'm gonna cut all of my letters apart so I can work them one by one and I laid them out on the back shoulders of my sweatshirt so I could kind of see where it needed to go. Now, different brands of puff vinyl use different heat settings, so be sure to check it. This tech wrap craft one was 310 for 15 seconds. I lined up my F because that's the center of crafter with the tag in the back, set it there, pressed it, peeled it off warm and voila. Then I worked my way around to each side, making sure to not touch any of the pressed letters that were already on there. Cause if you press it too many times, it's gonna melt it and it's just gonna look real sad. So you wanna make sure that you press it one and done. You also don't wanna layer anything over the puff vinyl cause that will also look sad. Once I got to the other side, then I did the opposite side. And because it is seven letters, I did the one in the center and then the three on either side. It just helped me make sure everything was gonna be centered. I love the monochrome look, but this would also look cute with like pink puff vinyl, white puff vinyl. They have a ton of different colors. So you could definitely get whatever you're feeling. Expressions Vinyl also has the puff vinyl and I did a sweatshirt for my mystery box. So I will link that tutorial down below too if you wanna check that out and see what white looks like 
super fun and I can't wait to wear this. I love that it's understated and fun. So if you're in the US and you're heading to a concert or a game this summer or beyond, chances are you're probably gonna have to have a clear bag. Some high schools even require that. So I'm gonna show you how you can jazz up a super cheap bag for any theme wherever you're going and have something super custom that you can put together pretty fast. So I'm gonna take you through this process and show you how I made this Chicago Cubs one, but just keep in mind, you could apply this to any sports team, any concert you're going to, Taylor Swift, Harry Styles, all the things. So just get creative with it and use these techniques. So to make my Cubs one, I wanted to start with a flag and this entire project minus the logo is available on my design space profile. So you can just go ahead and make it yourself. My bag is five by seven. And so I decided to make a flag kind of as the center of it, but I needed the background to be white. So I started with a rectangle and then I made a bunch of smaller ones that I put around so that it covered the entire kind of wavy part of the flag. Then we're gonna take all of these and weld them together. You can only do it one at a time. So I did weld two pieces and then weld result in another piece. And I also duplicated my flag and you'll see why in a second because we're gonna get rid of this other one. Once all of your white pieces, it doesn't have to be perfect, are welded, then you're gonna select that first flag plus the rectangle and hit slice. You're going to get a bunch of gobbledygook, but we're going to get rid of all of it but the image that looks like the flag. Now you've got a white piece that will fit right inside of the flag, and then you can add a W to it. So we've got our fly the W flag. Then I am adding it on top of this 5x7 image that I put in. It's just a shape by size so that I have a visual aid as I'm laying everything out. And then I went back into the images to find a baseball image that I liked. I put that down there. And then I also added text with that kind of shadow effect that we did earlier on those clear bags. And then I'm uploading a Cubs logo and this is what you'll have to do yourself if you want to do this because Design Space won't let me share this with you because it's a logo. So you're gonna upload a logo from the internet. I just got this from Google. And once I uploaded it, it's just gonna be the one color. So to get it to cut in blue and red, I am going to move the file down and then I'm going to duplicate it. So I've got two of the same thing going to make one red and one blue and then we're going to use the contour feature. We're going to deselect everything we don't want to cut. So for the red it's just going to be the C and for the blue it's going to be our little cubby bear. Once you do that you'll have your two separate pieces. You can go ahead and align them where they need to go and then they will cut in their respective colors. Now the last thing we want to do before we cut this out to help with the weeding and putting together process for the bag is we're going to select everything in red and click attach at the bottom, select everything in blue minus the W and attach, and then everything in white to attach. That's also going to help you with those shadows on your words. Now everything's going to cut separately, white, red, and then the blue is going to have just the little W off to the side so you can manually add that. And I'm grabbing some more of those colors from my multi-pack. It is so nice when you do a variety of projects like this that you have all the colors available. Follow the prompts, put everything in there, and then we're gonna weed all of the pieces. I am impressed with this TechWrap craft product. I bought this off of Amazon because it was on sale around Christmas just to try because everybody's been talking about it. And then they also sent me that puff vinyl. So I'm testing it out to let you guys know what I think. So half of it was sent, half of it was purchased. So just so you know, full transparency. Then we're going to use that parchment paper hack to layer everything. So I'm taking the blue and I'm going to add it on top of the red. And instead of having those weeding boxes, I just used where the bear sits to line it up. And I also used the shadows to make sure they were aligned on the top and bottom of each letter. I'm gonna manually put on the W just instead of having it all layered as one big chunk. And then I am adding that piece that's all together right on top of the white. This was a little bit harder because it's a white backer with white vinyl, but I finally got it figured out. It was all layered perfectly. And then I just wiped down my bag to get it clean with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, dried it and then added my decal right to the front of the bag. This is probably one of my favorite projects. I love it so much. It is so fun. 
I now have to figure out how I'm going to get to a Cubs game this year so I can rock this thing. Keep this in mind if your school requires bags like this or you're headed to a concert or any other professional sports team game. And then I just added this fun little strap that I ended up getting from Shein, but there are a ton on Amazon. Just search for wide guitar purse strap and you can scroll to your heart's content. That's gonna do it for this vinyl video. I hope it inspired you to get creating. And if it did, head down to the description because I've got all of my supplies linked down there as well as my blog where you can head over and get my free files. A huge thank you to Fetch for sponsoring this video. Be sure to head down to the description and click the link as well as using my code whiskey and wit for those 5,000 points. Be sure to hit subscribe down below if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.